Shasta. Trailer. Project. Part. Four. Hi folks, welcome to the show. In the last episode, I drew a life-size picture of a wall that needs to be rebuilt on my 1973 Shasta trailer. And today, I'm going to use that picture as a pattern to hopefully bring that wall into reality. I'm not really sure where to start the wall framing, but I think this front and bottom corner is as good a place as any. So I'll take off this board right here, make a copy of it, and attach it to my new wall panels. I'm sorry, brother. Somebody has to go first. 18 degrees. I'm 18. Not really. Okay, this is exciting. My first piece of new wall framing. Are we on piece number two already? This thing's really starting to take shape. I'm making some progress. I'm working on the top of the trailer now. I'll call it the crest of the trailer. It was originally constructed with two pieces of this three-quarter inch by three-quarter inch lumber stacked on top of one another. This piece, as you can see, is still good and I've started attaching it to the panels. The other piece had a big crack right here in the middle of it and it just looks like it has some water damage and it isn't in good shape so this is going into the garbage but to replace it I'm going to use some of this material that I ripped down it's Douglas fir three quarter inch by three quarter inch material and instead of just putting one more strip down here I'm going to go for broke and stack two more on top of one another to give it a little more strength. Now this top piece that I've started attaching to the panels is going on really nicely because it already has the natural curve of the trailer from 40 years of settling in place. However, these pieces that I just cut are still wild. I haven't pushed them into shape yet. And it's going to take a little bit of pressure to push them into the necessary curve. I'm going to use this top rail as a guide for these new lower rails and to keep it in place I've attached a few pieces of scrap lumber to the plywood above. So I'll finish nailing off this top rail and attaching the braces above it and then I'll work on pushing these two lower sticks into shape. I've got this top rail in place and the next strip cut to fit. Now I'll just apply a little bit of glue and see if I can't push it into shape. And now I'm ready to install piece number three. And that's how you make a homemade laminated beam. I'm taking my time, working in baby steps as it were, but I am slowly framing out this wall. I'm using both new lumber and some of the original wood that's still in good condition. The design for this wall is similar but not identical to the factory wall. Mainly I've changed the positioning of the plywood panels in relation to the framing. In the original design, the first piece of plywood started right here at the back of the trailer and then terminated about right here at four feet in. Then the next piece of plywood started here and stopped at the door frame. Above the door frame, there was just a single small piece of plywood and then a third piece of plywood went from this side of the door frame to the front of the trailer. This was a good idea because it only used three sheets of plywood and when you're manufacturing trailers, the less materials you can use the better, but it was very bad for the structural integrity of the wall, specifically over this door, because there was very little shear strength right here. You can see evidence of this on this top piece of siding because there are cracks on each side of the door frame. In the new, improved, revised Jenny's Garage design, 
I'm going to try to eliminate this problem. Instead of having a piece of plywood terminate right here, I'm going to have a single piece of plywood start on this side of the door, go all the way over the top, and end on the other side of the door, giving this area much more strength. Although this new design is much stronger than the original, there are a couple of disadvantages. I have more seams in the plywood now. I have one here, one here, and one here, and I also need to use an extra sheet. However, the advantage of a much sturdier header area over the top of the door greatly outweighs these negatives. Have you ever built a house out of popsicle sticks? Have you ever Baby, spent all afternoon working on a trailer. Have you ever felt like your life was just staples and liquid nails? Have you ever wondered, am I still on track or did I run off the rails? Well, now I've finished framing the front part of the trailer, and now I'm moving on to the back, so you might say I've made it past the front door. This is taking a lot longer than I had originally anticipated. I'm glad this isn't a 40 foot trailer. I'm walking a fine line with these staples. These are one inch staples and I want them to be recessed from the surface of the wood so they won't rub on the siding, but at the same time, I don't want them to go too deep for fear of them puncturing through the face of the wall. That's living on the edge. Sometimes I feel like my mood depends on my frame of reference. This is how you accidentally cut a bucket. It's been an experience I won't soon forget, but I've finished framing this wall. The next thing I'm going to do is take my skill saw, set at a very shallow depth, and trim a rough outline around the assembly. Say, Jenny's Garage, how are you going to know where to cut it once you flip it over? For that, you're going to have to just wait to be amazed. Wow! Oh no, I've cut into my finest linens. Ooh. At this time I can remove my little helper cleats. This glue has had more time to dry than I care to mention. Ah, the tipping of the wall. A weeks long extravaganza with a wide devotion and storied history. Prepare to be treated to a cornucopia of song, spirit, and overall merriment. Okay, so we need to flip this panel to access the other side. My measurements say seven feet tall. So if God is on my side, I should be able to flip it without knocking into the garage door. You ready to give this a try? Yeah. Folks, I am really excited about this next step. The time has come to trim around the outside of the wall panel and cut out the windows and door. 
To do this, I'm going to use a roto zip. This is a tool that I don't often have the opportunity to use. In fact, I don't even own a roto zip. This one was graciously lent to me by dear old dad. And this bit that you see here is what's going to make all the magic happen for me. This is a specialty bit with a ball bearing guide at the tip. And my theory is that as I cut out the shape of the wall panel and the holes for the windows and door, this ball bearing will rest on the frame beneath the paneling to serve as a guide. And I'll get just a nice, smooth, perfect cut in the shape that I want. That's the idea anyway. We'll see how it works in practice. Let me give you a piece of helpful advice. I always like to buy my wall roasts untrimmed. It's cheaper by the pound, tastes great on the grill or out of the oven, and I can give the scraps to all the little critters. Let's see how this thing works. I thought about trying to witch the windows from the other side to figure out where they were, but I'm trying to stay away from that black magic, so I'm going to use my trusty drill to mark where they are. Forgive me for saying so, but I don't think this looks half bad. Three-eighths bad? Probably. But definitely not half bad. The construction of the wall panel is almost complete. The last thing I need to do is securely fasten the plywood to the frame. The only thing that's holding the plywood panels to the frame underneath at this point is Liquid Nails construction adhesive and the one-inch staples that we drove through the frame from the other side. While this connection is strong enough for the wall to hold its shape here in the workshop, there's no way it will withstand the everyday rigors and stress of life out on the highway. To give this wall that extra strength that it needs, I've acquired some 3 quarter inch length, brass plated, tapered head, self-tapping wood screws. And what I'll do is place these screws around the whole perimeter of this wall as well as along all of the vertical studs that run throughout the wall. This will tie the plywood securely to the frame, it will give the wall a lot of sheer strength, and it should be able to easily handle whatever adventures I throw at this camper. So let's get to screwing! A lovely summer night, spending time with people I love, the crickets chirping in the moonlight, cool breeze, all is quiet, a lovely evening for fastening. As I'm screwing, I'm taking care to sink the heads of these screws below the surface of the plywood. That way I'll be able to fill this void and the finished surface will be smooth. the last screw, and aside from sanding and painting, the construction of this wall is complete. Next, we just need to successfully transplant this donor wall to the needy and deserving recipient. I need to gather my thoughts and courage a little bit before attempting that procedure, which will be featured in the next episode. Thanks for watching.